Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on the AM show. It's time now for the newspaper review brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. But my guest joining me for today is Sami Obing, Executive Director of Parliamentary Network Africa. He will be joining me shortly. And today being a holiday again, e happy Eid Fitter to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Um, we don't have newspapers, but thanks to technology. We have myjoyonline.com and all the online platforms where we, uh, we can populate our news stories from. So I'll start by reading some of the headlines, let you have a fair idea of what's happening, the latest in our current affairs, and then we'll get into the stories, and then hopefully when my guest joins me, we can get into the stories in detail. Starting from, of course, myjoyonline.com. Now, in some of our headlines, Fire Guts Medina Market. Uh, we believe that BVRs can't be missing due to EC's stringent measures. That is according to Asie Dunketia. Ekufado not man enough to reject anti-gay bill outright. Again, according to Asie Dunketia, he was um, Evans Mensah's guest on PM Express yesterday, and he had a lot to say. Ghana Airport Company Limited staff indicted, interdicted over alleged cocaine smuggling at Kotoka International Airport. Those are some of the headlines on myjoyonline.com. 50% um, of Agenda 111 hospitals will be completed by end of year. That is from Insia Sare. I don't know if you are following the story of the launch yesterday for a performance tracker launched by uh, the government, but we'll get into all that later on in the show. I want to be talked about in the next 500 years. That is according to Nana Kwame Bediako, a.k.a. Cheddar. Ghanaians are happy with government's refusal to facilitate clearing of goods for Hillcath project. And on some international fronts, Biden vows ironclad support for Israel amid Iran attack fears. Um, Asedu Nketia questions why no one has been arrested over John Kuma's death. That's also another interesting bit where we've seen about nine people trying to get that seat in Parliament. But Samuel Bain just joined me on phone. Samuel Bain is Executive Director of Parliamentary Network Africa. Samuel Bain, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Great. Now, like we do here on the news review segment, I'll give you a minute or two to speak to any topical issue that you want to re respond to. It could be the launch of... Um, the performance tracker by the government. It could be on some of the things that Sia Dunketia has been saying. What's on your mind this morning? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the big story certainly for me today uh, is the launch of the performance tracker. And um, it is important to recognize, you know, government has a, a responsibility to deliver on its mandate to the citizenry that has put government in place. And so delivering, um, I can see is one of the, the key things that government must ensure being accountable to the people on its performance and how things have worked. And and so yes, to have a to have it in the form of using technology to put up a tractor that tell out what government is doing, what projects are in the pipeline, which ones are set, and what have you. It's, it's a step in the right direction. However, um, I, I think it would be great, um, just like we saw that even from yesterday, your team um, on radio started doing, we all have a responsibility to, 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 to fact check these things, you know. Um, it must not be business as usual where you know, we have information put up and dumped up, dumped, dumped on us. Uh, we recall that before the elections of 2020, if I'm not mistaken, there was a similar you know, online to, you know, to, to put up information about what project government has ventured into, where they are, and we know what conversations went on around with these online tools. We saw some instances where the projects that were pointed to either did not exist, uh, some instances where projects that were set to have been completed were completely not anywhere close to completion and what have you. So uh, it's not a bad thing that government is making efforts to be accountable uh, to the citizenry on what it said it would do, but we also have a responsibility to, 
look into these accountability information that we put up by government and to see how we would um, we would um, uh, vet these markets. Uh, yes, Mr. Tedo uh, had a lot to say yesterday. Uh, I think uh, on the on the on the on the program that was on. Uh, very interesting thoughts shared on the bit about the uh, electoral commission and all of the uh, purported or alleged uh, missing items and how it has effect on 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 our election. These are certain issues that we don't we don't have to be sweeping under the carpet because mm. you know election integrity is so important. The upcoming election is a is of great importance to all of us and. Uh, it must not be business as usual <clears throat> where the opposition party seem to be the ones complaining, where the electoral commission seem to be only defending and not even listening to uh, um, the merits of some of the arguments that are being made and probably attempting to deal with the issues. Um, and, and we need to be, we need to be moving away from this. So I think we did a we did a, a context of a minute or so. These are some of the. Uh, issues I would just like to pick up on. Uh. Right. Thank you, Samuel Bing. And um, in fact, continuing from your last um, presentations, let's get into some of the things that the chairman of the NDC has been saying, as Adrian Ketia. Let's do the story on his um, assertions on the president not being a man of his own or not man enough to outrightly reject the anti-gay bill. That story is on mindjoinline.com, and I'll read it, and then you can respond to some of the things that he's saying. The headline is, A Kufado Not Man Enough to Reject Anti-Gay Bill. Right. I will read that story to you in a bit, and then we get into it. So... The national chairman of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, John Sinasir Nketiah, has firmly stated that President Okufado masterminded the lawsuit that is supposedly preventing him from assenting to the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill recently passed by Parliament. The experienced politician claimed on Joy News' PM Express on Wednesday, April 10th, that it was not a mere coincidence that the president could refer to a lawsuit that was yet to be filed as the basis for his decision not to sign the bill. By this, the former NDC General Secretary concluded that the President was part of the plan to frustrate the anti-LGBTQI plus bill from becoming law. Quote, it is clearly an excuse, and it's a wrong excuse because he, that is President Okufado, was citing the court case even before anybody could file it. Samuel Bing, do you have any response or reaction to this claim by the chairman of the NDC saying that, and we all know that um, even before the president, even before we saw the lawsuit, the president had announced that there was a lawsuit preventing him from assenting to the bill. So what's reaction to the story? Well, um, Mr. Mr. Yes, um, that the president whether he masterminded or not masterminded you know, the, the final lawsuit um, against the process. However, you know, it is important to to, to the merit or otherwise of, of this entire standoff, if you like, between the executive and the, the and the legislature. And those of us at parliamentary West Africa, you know, we have, we have maintained a few things in some of which aligns with some of the thoughts shared by Mr. Stephen Kitia, but some of which necessarily does not align with the thoughts. The first point is this. The, the president and the executive, you know, deserves every right to have an opinion or viewpoint about the bill as part of the parliament. So remember that it wasn't uh, a government bill, so to speak. This is a private member's bill that was presented. And so they, as members of the executive who are not necessarily members of the legislature, uh, may, may differ uh, uh, from parliament's viewpoint on whether to pass the bill or not to pass the bill. And, 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 that, and that opinion, they have every right to, to hold. However, that opinion, there are fora 
uh, at which those opinions can be can be expressed, and that includes even you know challenging the legality of the, the bill. And and nothing stops uh, uh, people around the presidency or the executive branch in you know taking actions towards you know uh, once once the law is in, is in place, challenging the legality, the constitutionality, or, or whatever as far as the bill is concerned. What we have a problem with is the attempt by the executive branch to uh, halt a legitimate parliamentary process, you know, to, 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 to impede the work of parliament, so to speak, in a way that we find very untidy and in a way that we think uh, presents uh, a precedent that is not a very good one. And, and can go a long way to help us in the entire lawmaking process. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the fact that, you know, hiding behind uh, a lawsuit, which uh, already is taking some time to be heard. We know the processes that is, is going on to fast track it, and we are hoping that these processes will be, will be quick so that at least they can bring some finality to the matter. Hiding behind that and having Parliament escape from even presenting the bill for the purposes of the constitutionally mandated timelines within which this bill uh, can have the accent process or even if the president is refusing to accent it, signal parliament about his refusal to accent it. It's for me a very big, 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 big problem. And it presents, like I said, a precedent on how going forward, bills passed by parliament, if we do not take care, we may have instances where individuals, just like it is, it is in this particular case, putting impediments in the way of even the executive itself in progressing on uh, bills that they present to parliament and, and parliament gets to pass simply because there is a lawsuit against us. So the process we are completely, the process that, and the, and, the, and the, the position that has been taken by the executive branch, we are completely against it. Although, yes, we, 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 we agree with whoever says that the executive has a, has, a, has a right to completely disagree with the bill, completely. But there are avenues through which the executive can express these disagreements. So, yes, Zati uh, Duketia himself also has uh, the right to express his viewpoint. I'm not too sure of, I mean, of course, I cannot confirm or deny his um, usage of, 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 of masterminding and attributing that to His Excellency the President. But these are, these are our thoughts. So far as you know, what is going on is concerned, and and this does not, this does not present a very very good uh, precedent, you know, for lawmaking in in this country. And and the earlier the executive and the legislature, of course, even with the judiciary and the role they have to play, comes to terms with ensuring that these matters are dealt with, the better it will be for all of us. Right. I mean, this is not even the only bill passed by Parliament that's, you know, you know, not progressing or the President is refusing to assent his signature to. But let's move on. Let's do one last story about some of the things Sidwin Ketia is saying and then we can move into other stories. He says, we believe the BVRs can't be missing due to EC's stringent measures. Now, the story again is on mindjoonline.com. And it reads, the Chairman of the National Democratic Congress, Johnson Asidwin Ketia, has expressed skepticism about the reported theft of some biometric voter registration, that is a BVR kit, from the Electoral Commission's warehouse. Describing it as extremely strange, the NDC chairman, in a one-on-one -on -one interview with Evans Mensa on PM Express, questioned the security measures in a place at the EC headquarters and the warehouse where the BVR kits are stored. He argued that the stringent security protocols typically associated with safeguarding sensitive equipment like the BVR kits it would be impossible for them to go missing without a trace. I'm sure you've been following the story of these missing BVRs, although the EC says there's no information or data on those missing machines that could compromise the integrity of the elections. Um, it's something that, is this something that you think we should be worried about, especially in this election year, with a few months to go? What do you think, Samuel Bing? No, we, we certainly must be worried. It is not for nothing that the Electoral Commission office uh, and, 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 and all facilities that are associated with the Electoral Commission are heavily guarded with a security wise. 
I don't think that it is a coincidence that the Electoral Commissioner himself, the residents, the movement in town, the deputy commissioners, we've been seeing it when it was time for the first cases. We see the kind of security that they themselves get provided that these people, you know, who are more less We've seen the police go by uh, in, uh, the kind of security that uh, you drive past their house, be in front of their house, what are either in their house, they are in the government. We know what the police are requesting for to speak for the electors. We see this as we're generally taking time there's the letter from the building, but the following up on the building, and the kind of scooting that you, you have to do. What are those things going to They point to the fact that, you know, the things happening in the electoral commission, the materials in the, the, the processes and what have you, mm. are things that need to be taken care of because a single glitch can cause us a lot. We know how uh, materials that are printed for elections are done at, at, under very strict security arrangements. So it should certainly be curious to anybody that election materials being kept in warehouses of the Electoral Commission are deemed uh, to have been fixed or are left to have been compromised in that particular manner. I don't think that the Electoral Commission focus should be on explaining to us whether those materials you know, have been data that can compromise the election or otherwise. I think the focus should rather be on whether its systems are so full that we can have some of these things missing without tracing. And, and that certainly is the area we should be focusing on. It shouldn't be about the fact that, you know, yes, these things are stolen, or we cannot confirm or deny that they are stolen, but if they are, we, we really do not think that it will affect anything. I, I really think that kind of excuse is, is lame, it's lousy, and we should not be entertaining that from an election management point of view. Right. Um, let's head now to graphiconline.com and do some headlines. So I'll read out the headlines and then you can tell me which of the stories you want to respond to or react to and then we get into the story. So on graphic.com, we have um, President signs wildlife bill into law. Well, there's, he's signing something into law. Graphics, your Ghana, my Ghana program, voters prioritize something. New towing policy to check breakdown vehicles underway. Kofi Bosompim Osafomafo appointed as new SNIT boss. Do you, should we get into that story, Mr. Bing? About Kofi Bosompim? Oh, yeah, the SNIT yeah, one is right. actually a very interesting one. The one yes. that you'll sign it also, I'll be very interested in what the story actually points to. <laughs> and how right. it relates even with the conversation around private members' bills and the assignment. Exactly. So let's get into the story of Kofi Bosompim uh, Osafomafo appointed as new SNIT boss. And it's an uh, interesting timing on that one. I would say. So President Akufuado has appointed Kofi Bosompim, that is son of Osafu Mafo, as the new Director General of Social Security and National Insurance Trust. The new Senate boss is the son of the President's former minister and now senior advisor, Ya Osafu Mafo, like I mentioned. So he takes over from Dr. John Ofori Tenkrang, who has been instructed to hand over his duties by Monday, April 15th. A letter dated April 8th signed by the Secretary to the President, Nana Bedietu Asante, an address to John Oferitengkran and seen by Graphic Online stated, quote, reference is made to your appointment letter dated 1st July 2019, issued by the Public Services Commission. In accordance with paragraph 8 of the said appointment letter, I regret to inform you that the President has terminated your appointment effective 15th April 2024 with three months salary in lieu of notice. You are directed to hand over your office to Mr. Kofi Bosompim or Safo Mafo and proceed to collect any terminal benefit you may be entitled to. To ensure a smooth transition, kindly hand over and cease to act as the Director General of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, Fund, uh, Trust no later than close of business on Monday, April 15, 2024. The timing of this sack a new appointment, and he's not the only one who's been appointed. There's been a series of new ministerial appointments, and among others. What's, what's your take on this new appointment, firing and hiring that the president is doing in a build-up to, I, I like to say in a build-up because it's, it's election year, and when you probe or delve into the issues, you always find some sort of link to election. What's your thought? Well, it's true that there has been firing, hiring, resignation, mm. Uh, in the last couple of days, the foreign state institutions are concerned. 
Yes, it is. Uh, we've seen many of them, from GRA to you know the board of ECG thing to you know the split issue, yada yada yada. Uh, could they be linked to elections? Uh, for me, I think these are the kinds of uh, 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 stories that uh, those of you in the media, uh, <laughs> those as members of the institution, can follow me, right? Right, so right. You can, you can draw the linkages with interest so that it's not uh, speculation, this is not conjecture, but it is based on, you know, the fact that we, we, we are able to uncover the cover. Now, uh, on the slate matter specifically, this certainly must not be an issue that we must not be concerned about. We are talking about slate. In fact, even if it was any other institution, mm. the process leading up to this should certainly uh, pique our interest. But particularly that it is slate. You know, the place that you and I, after working very, very hard every mm. month, uh, we are mandated by law to take some of our money to, uh, to, be, to be kept for us, you know, uh, for the future. And uh, a place which is managed with our resources and all of that. Whatever happens there certainly must be of interest to us because it may or may not have dire consequences on our money or it may have even positive consequences on our money, and so we should be interested. And government itself must be interested in not keeping some of these eyebrows when raised mm. under the carpet because uh, uh, public sentiment, public opinion, public viewpoint on, on some of these moves can have its own implication on governance, the, the popularity of the, of the government, especially to an election. Why am I pointing to all of these? Uh, it's Mr. Osafu Marco. A staffer at the Senate. Yes, he is. Is he one who is in life to become a DG at Senate, at least uh, from the role that he occupied? I think that he was a deputy, if I'm not mistaken. And so, all that things being equal, there is no director general, and the one has to be elevated to that point. Maybe the standards for at Senate requires that somebody who is in there and all of these. But you recall that even Mr. Sapu Marco's appointment to Senate a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, mm -hmm. was one that did not come without the public reasons and concerns, especially because of his political linkage uh, to the opinion of Afro Mafo and, and, and what have you. And so, several years down the line, uh, if the one who at the time of being appointed itself into a position which was being uh, a, a, a relatively uh, junior position to the DP, all of a sudden, one thing after the other, and then we will receive a letter signed by the secretary to the president mm. saying somebody has, has had to leave and has to hand over to this other person who a few years ago raised the concerns were raised. Certainly, we require, first of all, as the people who, whose money runs next, uh, 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 secondly, as uh, the controversies that surround you know, this. Uh, appointment in the press, with thirdly, the linkages with the Dr. Marco Senior, uh, the presidency, and all of that. And mm. fourthly, even with some of the allegations that are being thrown in the public domain on how all of these things were, were contained in a certain uh, publication that uh, 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 was put up prior to elections, and how these matters were preempted in that particular publication, and now it looks like it's rolling out and how it's linked to some other organizations and companies that place it on their board and what have you. If right. these things are in the public domain, I think it is important that the government sees reason to respect those of us who are citizens of this country and contributors to it, respect us well enough mm -hmm. to provide some offers and explanations on these matters. While those of you in the media, those of us in civil society who directly are connected to these matters, look at other avenues in probing into this issue because we cannot allow such things to be hanging any time they happen. Well, thank you for that submission. Time will not allow us to proceed, but uh, one last headline on graphic.com and then we can wrap it up. A JSO by elections uh, slated for April 30th following the passing of John Kuma. And I mean, let me reference what Asedu Nketiah was saying on PM Express last night about 
why we are not probing into the death of this man. And it's like there's just a scaffold for who takes the seat. About nine people, including Kwesi uh, Nyantechi, uh, lawyer, Kwabina Boateng, Dr. Evans Dia, Klinsman Kakari, Helena Mensa, Abina Pokua, Mua Boateng. I mean, there are a number of them who want to take that seat in the passing, after the passing of John Kuma. Do you have any reaction to that? And then we can wrap up the conversation. Well, on the, on the bit about the election, because yeah. it's constitutional, uh, it's very unfortunate, you know, Mr. Kumar had to, had to pass, may, may God grant rest to his, his soul. And um, around this time when he's giving up, uh, uh, I mean, the funeral and all of those things are not taking place, around this time when family is grieving, yeah. Uh, uh, I, do, I really do not think that the best time to be, you know, uh, culturally to be uh, uh, doing things that speak, speak to aggravate the pain that, you know, the family is already involved with. You know, yeah, with like the rush, the rush to replace him so quickly, huh? Well, I mean, when it comes to, I'm talking about this thing related to, you know, the state. Of course, that is that is the the law must be supported by the uh and the work. I'm only that public politicization of public is can be problematic. Comes to the election, unfortunately for us, our constitution, all those that we have to do that there's a death from a year, still provides an avenue for uh, elections to be held, maybe in the midst of all of them. So unfortunately, it's constitutional, and we needed to comply with that. And so 30th April has been set as a date for this election to take place. I wonder if the election, you certainly will find people who will be clamoring for the, the vacant uh, 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 position. I don't uh, advise that all of this and the, and the, and the, and the fact that the, 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 the fund exists. Uh, so that in the midst of wanting to replace him, you know, it is not seen as people not being sensitive to the life and legacy of a man who lived well and, and really the people of the church who don't have to follow uh, what at the level and what has been loved you know, and respected and very, very much. You can only wish that people of the church well, even as we lead up to the military. The and we can only be following and seeing how the primary is even at the NPC level to replace mm. him. For the main election go. But in all of this, we should also be very clear on the fact that he's got wife, he's got children, he's got family just reaching at this moment. And, and, and we, we, we need necessarily to respect the kind of people in, in everything that we do. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for the news review, Samuel Bing, who is the executive director, Parliamentary Network Africa. And before we go, I'd like to remind you that this segment was brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. We'll take a break now. When we return, there's sports. And after that, we get into our big stories. Stay with me.